Excellent! What's up guys and welcome to Probing Paul, episode number 12. That's a baker's... No, that's not a baker's dozen. Next episode will be a baker's dozen. This is my dozenth episode. This is a Q&A video where I answer your questions that you have asked uh, in the past. And the past was a month ago for Probing Paul number 11, listed right here. Looking back through the sands of time all the way to Probing Paul number one, which is now just a tiny, tiny little image there in the corner. Um, but yeah, let's let's just get started. Um, again, all these questions were taken from the comments from last month's video. And if you guys want to jump to anything in specific, because I'm going to talk for a little while here, I should have uh, links with the uh, timestamps down there in the description. First question here is from Kramer Wolf. He says, hey, Paul, do you and uh, Bitwit Kyle, or have you and Bitwit Kyle ever considered doing a joint channel? I respect both your opinions and approaches. You're more technical while Kyle is more average Joe Gamer IMO, but I find both you, you both cover a lot of identical material. Wouldn't joining resources save you both time or would you two just drink too much? Uh, you hit on quite a few of the very relevant points there. Drinking, uh, I mean, I mean we, we both enjoy a beer here and there. I usually keep my drinking mainly to Tuesday nights these days, um, but more to the point, uh, Kyle and I work together every single week. Uh, we're good friends, and we have a pretty good working relationship as well, which um, I think both of us are pretty happy with. The main reason that we don't sort of join forces together, honestly, directly, would be because of money. Um, because when you have a YouTube channel that generates income via the ads that are uh, sent and, and displayed to people before you watch the video, assuming you have uh, whitelisted my channel if you're a good person, or if not, no big deal. Um, but if we had the same channel, then we would just have one uh, income stream from that. Now, granted, maybe we could get more views uh, that would kind of even that out, but just since we're both two separate people, we both have two separate companies, uh, we decided to keep things separated, although we do have, uh, again, that regular uh, interaction that we do on the live show every week. So um, we kind of worked, we kind of have a joint, joint working relationship, but not a joint channel. Um, although Kyle did just recently start a, uh, a paid channel, uh, which is called Bitwit Ultra, which you guys can go and sign up for if you're interested. Uh, this is his normal channel, Bitwit, and now he has Bitwit Ultra. And for, I think, a buck fifty a month, you can sign up and you can watch all of his videos uh, a week early, including opening fan mail. Oh. I haven't even watched that. Actually, I, I haven't signed. I, I, I claimed I wasn't going to do the free trial, and I, I have followed through with that. I haven't done it yet. I'm sure I will soon. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. And of course, I would ha be happy to support him in his ongoing endeavors. All right, next question here is from Xanadu Carter. Uh, he's asking I was thinking about buying an AMD FX8350 processor for my gaming rig and was wondering what motherboard I should buy to go along with it. No! No, Xanadu. No! Don't you don't you don't buy an FX8350 right now. We are literally probably weeks away. I don't know. The AMD promised within the first quarter is when Zen, uh, their architecture and Ryzen CPUs are going to launch. So it's really not really not a good time at all to invest in an FX8350. Give yourself a couple weeks, a month at most, and you will have new AMD processors to choose from. They'll be much faster. The 8350 is not a useless processor by any stretch, but if you're playing more intense games, it's not gonna get the same uh, performance as you would get with a current generation Intel processor, and definitely it's not gonna be on par with their Zen-based stuff because they've been working on that for like five to 10 years or something like that, and, and it's, been, it's been too long. We've been waiting too long, so um, you should wait just a little bit longer as well. Uh, Jake Connor in a related question asks, do you have Zen CPUs but can't tell us? Yes. Yes, I do. And no, I can't tell you. That makes, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, Lunchbox asks, why the hell do people buy KCPUs and not overclock? This is a response to one of the questions that was asked last month, uh, where the gentleman had purchased a, um, I believe it was it was a 4790K and um, was not overclocking it and and asked a question about that. Um, I this is a legitimate question though, and I can answer this being someone who has bought an unlocked processor and not overclocked it before. I remember my i7 920 um, that I got. I did not overclock for a good five six months after I got it. I did not have the experience back then that I do now with overclocking. And when you're talking about overclocking and running something out of spec. It can be a little scary to some people, and you're like, oh, what happens? What if I turn, do that thing, that overclocking thing, and turn up my multiplier, and then the, the CPU just bursts into flames and fizzles, and then my computer melts into a block of, 
of like uh, aluminum and, and iron and, and other base component materials, and then I don't have a computer anymore. I mean, that's that's probably not going to happen, uh, but it is understandable from people who have never overclocked before. Um, the other thing I would say, just as a more legitimate reason, might be because like the same reason that you buy an SLI or dual graphics card capable motherboard or setup, uh, even though you're only buying a single graphics card. It's keeping yourself open for future possibilities. And there were also some uh, responses to this question um, when I was looking at it in the comments that also said the same thing. Buy a processor right now, and if it gets you by and you don't need to overclock it, and it's doing everything you want it to do, and you're not noticing any lag or anything like that, you can leave it as is for now, and then maybe six months or eight months or down the road, you can upgrade your cooler and then overclock and get yourself a bit more performance of that kind of thing. Um, the main uh, hesitation with overclocking is if you're going to have to run higher voltage, because if you turn up the voltage, everything else overclocking, you should be fine. It might use a little bit more power, but your CPU lifespan isn't going to um, be hurt or anything like that. If you do increase the voltage, though, that can lead to premature death, uh, because higher voltage can um, cause issues over time with CPUs, and uh, that's probably as far as much depth as I should get into about that for this kind of video. 84 decoy 84 asks, Hey Paul, I have a HyperX Cloud 2 headset. No matter what I do, my microphone will not work. Looked at my microphone on my recording devices, saw that the DB is on zero, the slider won't move. I have done a refresh install of Windows, updated all my drivers, uh, and received a new headphone dongle and microphone boom. Nothing I've tried has worked. Is there something I'm missing or should I just buy a new headset? Uh, if I do buy a new headset and asking about Corsair options. Uh, headsets, I think you have a pretty good headset in the HyperX Cloud 2. It gets, it's very well reviewed. Um, and if you're not going up into the, say, $150 to $200 range or buying, say, a dedicated headphones and then using a separate mic or something like that, um, the HyperX Cloud 2 is going is gonna to be a good option. I would also point to my Sennheisers back here. Um, these aren't available anymore, but these are the PC360, but um, Sennheiser, I think, does a good job with their headsets, although they do tend to be more expensive, usually starting in the upper uh, upper 100 to $200 range and going all the way to $300 plus. Anyway, more to the point, um, what I think your problem might be is a conflict between uh, your internal sound card and the sound card that the HyperX Cloud 2 headset might be using. So bear in mind, there are two ways to connect the HyperX Cloud 2 headset up. You can use what it comes with, which is uh, this little dongle right here. And this is a USB device, so see a USB plug right there. And this is actually a little sound card, a little external sound card with a separate mic and headphone input. And if you're using that, then you're not gonna be using the sound card that's part of your computer. However, you will need to take, of course, the plug on the HyperX Cloud 2 headset and plug it into this, and you'll probably also need to use this little adapter right here. So if you look at the actual plug on the headset, you'll notice uh, it's actually a tip ring ring sleeve plug. So this is an eighth inch plug, but tip ring ring sleeve mean, means there's an another connection point there. And that's because it is transferring the data, not just for the audio output from your computer to your ears, but also taking uh, your microphone and outputting it through that signal as well. So if you're plugging this plug directly into the back of your computer, uh, and not using the, the the HyperX module, then it's not gonna work unless you use an adapter, much like I believe it comes with, no, it doesn't come with that. So you would need an adapter for your motherboard in order to actually plug that in directly, because um, you would need the splitter, um, unless this splitter can plug into both of the splits on your motherboard, but I kinda doubt that. And I don't know, who knows, maybe, maybe it's meant to do that. Uh, the other option, of course, which you, sounds like you might be using, is using the dongle itself, um, the, the, that USB dongle that it comes with. And if you're using that, then you need to make sure, of course, that the drivers are installed um, from uh, HyperX, and you should be able to download those if they're not recognized automatically. You might need to do some driver cleaning uh, if you have uh, driver conflicts in there or something like that. But pay attention to your sound here. Um, if you right click on the little sound icon in the bottom right in Windows, you can pull up all of your playback devices and your recording devices. So for instance, right now, I am using an external uh, device and I also have sound coming in. If you can see your device, uh, but there's no levels here, then you will probably that probably means that you have uh, an inline mute button on or something like that. So uh, just pay attention to these here. Bear in mind that you can right click here and tell it to show or not show disabled devices. Um, that they can be hidden sometimes. So double check that and make sure you don't have something that's hidden and disabled. 
um, that you can re-enable, uh, and that's the same uh, thing over here on, on playback devices as well. You can show or not show those. And of course, if you have lots of different devices connected, you might have lots of different options. And bear in mind that you're, you're probably on your motherboard have a Realtek output, and then uh, if you have your uh, HyperX Cloud 2 device plugged in, then you probably also have a separate device for that. So bear in mind which, you're plug which one you're plugged into, and uh, you should be able to switch back and forth between that and hopefully get yourself up and running, because that is a good headset. And based on what you're describing, it doesn't sound like you're actually, uh, since you've had the, the, the relevant components replaced and RMA'd, uh, it doesn't sound like you're dealing with a faulty product. It's probably something going on with the configuration with your sound devices. Okay, next up is Mark Smith, who says, Hey Paul, what kind of wood is your tabletop? It looks super slick. I'd like to make something like it for a new desk. Well, Mark, you are in luck, because uh, you are also giving me an opportunity to plug my uh, Garage Work Logs playlist, and I'll link this playlist down in the description. But I have done quite a few videos, uh, about, gosh, how many now? 14 videos on my garage and cleaning it up at different times and that kind of thing. The one you're going to want right here is the new tables vlog, where I actually install these. They come from Ikea, um, and, and I take you through the entire process. They're made of birch, uh, these ones specifically, I, I believe, right? Birch? Yeah, Ikea Hemarp Birch 74 inch by three. And then I also use some Ikea legs to go along with that just to hold them up. And then I have mounted them to the uh, wall as well with some L brackets and some very strong screws. And it's working great so far. Um, but yeah, watch the video. You can see the entire process and the time lapse and all that good stuff. Next up is Gabriel Umo. He says, Paul, love your videos. Awesome as usual. I have a puzzling question. If Ryzen and Vega fail, which they wouldn't, Praying, uh, so he's praying that they don't fail. Uh, I am too, Gabriel. Uh, what would happen to the CPU and GPU market? Uh, That's obviously a little bit of speculation here. Um, and I, like you, am hoping that they do not fail. And I'm not expecting them to fail either based on um, all of the early information that's come, come out. But let's just say, uh, to speculate, what would happen? I think what would happen is the same thing that's been happening for the past five years or so, which is Intel releasing new products that, yeah, maybe are a little bit faster than their last generation of products, but nothing too mind-blowing, usually in the 5 to 10% uh, performance improvement range. Uh, we probably would see prices continue to creep up. Remember, like, the Intel, two, the two main mainstream Intel K-SKUs used to cost 200 bucks and 300 bucks. Now they cost... 250 bucks and 350 bucks, or even more than that. Um, and you, you, yeah, you, you probably see Intel just kind of continue to, all right, we're going to plod along at a rel relatively reasonable pace here and, and not do a whole lot new. Uh, if Vega fails, I'm not sure. I, I do feel like NVIDIA has, has pushed the envelope, and uh, I think on the Radeon side, they've been providing more competition with NVIDIA as compared to the uh, the CPU side is from AMD uh, providing com competition to Intel. So yeah, uh, GPU market, probably you would just see NVIDIA be like, oh cool, we don't need to lower our prices on anything and we can keep the prices as is and maybe like, maybe push back some of the launches for other stuff. Like we need this competition in order to keep Intel and NVIDIA on their toes uh, to keep them pushing forward and um, to make sure that they're not just sort of sitting back on their IP and, and waiting for something to happen before they're like, all right, now we can now we can release this thing that we've had for a year or two, but we haven't given to people because it would compete with our existing products that are already out there and cost less for us to make, that kind of thing. Anyway, lots goes into the um, considerations when you're talking about computer sales and, uh, and the entire marketplace and everything, but uh, that's that's what I think would happen. And Chris Clay asks, hey Paul, love your content. I haven't got a clear answer, but is a Z270 board better at overclocking at a 6700K than a Z170? Recently got a really good deal on a 6700K and I'm rebuilding my rig. So the simple answer to your question, Chris, is no. A Z270 board is not inherently better at overclocking uh, than a Z170 board. Um, what can make a difference is the power delivery on the board. And um, typically, if you're buying a budget or entry-level Z170 or Z270 board, say the ones that cost you know, 90 to $120, that's usually the first place where they skimp on the hardware that's inter integrated onto the motherboard is gonna be the power delivery. Um, you'll either have fewer power phases or you will have a lack of cooling on them. And that can actually limit your overclocking potential uh, or limit your overclocking stability at higher overclocks. Um, I definitely have had my share of Z170 boards that didn't overclock as well, um, whereas a higher-end Z170 board did overclock a little bit better. But there's nothing in the chipset itself 
that makes Z270 better, or Z270 if you if you like if you like using Z instead of Z. I'll throw that out there. Um, but yeah, I would say just look for a board that's uh, reasonably good overclocking. You're probably going to need to spend about 150 to 200 dollars uh, for something like that. Although there are some uh, reasonable ones at the lower end. Look at uh, product reviews. See what people have done with overclocking with the specific board that you're looking at and what they've gotten out of it, uh, stable. Um, the main benefit of Z270 is going to be you have a little bit more compatibility for M.2 devices, so you can have more M.2 slots uh, for high-speed SSDs. Oh, and Optane support. If you're at all interested in Optane, you do need uh, Z270 and KB Lake, uh, at least for the time being, until another platform launches from Intel, which, which might happen in the future at some point. Uh, last thing to point out here, this is just my P.O. box. If you guys are interested in sending me anything, we usually do unboxing of these things on the uh, live stream. But that's my P.O. box address, 4325 Diamond Bar, California, if you want to send me anything. Just throw it out there. I don't have it listed in descriptions or anything, so it's the only way that you can find that. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been Probing Paul, episode number 12. Uh, if you enjoyed it, of course, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, I will be back with another video probably Monday. That is my plan. This super secret thing that I have right here to my left that you guys can't even see. It's a it's an epic build, completely unexpected. I'm sure you guys will be excited. That should be up Monday, so uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos, and we'll see you next time.